Okay, so here we are. We're going to talk this morning um, about web services made easy without any coding. I thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Don Murray, and I'm here with uh, Dean Hintz. And um, let's see. Um, we'll, we're going to introduce ourselves a little bit later. Okay. So first oh, of all, okay. I, okay. I was all set to introduce myself now, but well, wait, wait, wait. well okay. we got to do what the slides say. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to talk about this morning is um, we're just very quickly over safe software and FME. We're not going to waste any time there. Then we're going to talk very briefly about our approach to web services, which the title does give you a hint. It's all about making it easy. Then we're going to work through a bunch of really simple demos um, to really show you how easy it is to get started. So at the end, you leave thinking, hey, I can do this. Yeah, okay. You can, so, you can do this at home. Go that's ahead. Right. Try it and um, we are really working hard to give you time for questions and answers. So we are going to be done questions and answers and everything out of here by in one hour to, because we know you're all very, very busy. There's a hashtag at the bottom there, FME webinar. Yeah. And who are we? Well, I'm the follically challenged guy. Um, Don Murray, there I am there. And um, there's Dean. Dean's um, cheating a little bit. You can see he grows hair yeah, uh, just, all just, over just his to, head. Just to compensate uh, whatever is losing on top, I get some down below. That's right. That's right. And there's our, our, Twitter, uh, our, our Twitter tags there, so you can uh, follow us or whatever you want. And there we have, we have Laura. She's, um, she's um, with us today, and she's going to be answering all your questions. So please ask questions. And you can see that Laura has by far the best hair. Um, of the, this group this morning. Yeah, I, so, I was trying to catch so, up, uh, you so, know, and grow yeah. my hair long, but it, it, yeah, it, it wasn't right. looking good. Right. So if you put us all together, we're pretty. We have average hair. Yeah. So, uh, but that's Laura making up the thing. So any unanswered questions, of course, we'll get back to them. And um, so really, uh, lean on us. We talk about uh, the restaurant model is safe. It's not just a product. It's also this group, great group of people, who are behind uh, behind the product, helping you get started, and with the more challenging problems. Okay. So who who is Safe Dean? Well, safe software, uh, like it says 95 exuberant. I think we're about 100 employees. So, so. that must have mean that there's five who aren't exuberant? Is yeah, that what that's yeah, saying? Yeah, better track those down. Okay. And we are on the, the sunny or the wet west coast. Yeah, or it's right, right now. now. It's pretty yeah. warm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we have partners got worldwide. Partners all and happy customers yeah. all over As the place. As opposed to making customers happy, we like happy customers. Okay. Yeah, we, we, Subtle difference we make there. sure they're happy before That's right. customers. So you can see um, wherever you are in the world, there's a partner um, um, ready for you. We work really hard to grow our, um, we have a professional services network of people who can um, work with you and um, help you um, wherever you are. We focus on training and things. We do have a small professional services group. But more and more, we like to really find somebody close to you that can help you get uh, and get going. So that's about safe software. Um, our product FME is all about moving data, converting data, freeing data, so that you can get whatever data you need to access wherever it is to wherever it needs to be. And um, also, you know, so transforming it is a big one. It could be something as simple as reprojection. Could be airpoint on area overlay. It could be almost anything. Yeah, and we started off with uh, uh, GIS or CAD to GIS. Yeah. And uh, which was sort of a vector to vector type stuff. Yeah. And then uh, over time, we added more and more uh, formats, uh, format those different families of formats, and each major family of formats uh, added another level of transformation required yeah, yeah. because the underlying data models were yeah. that much different. Yeah, and the nice thing is you can read a whole bunch of these different formats at once or different types of data at once, bring them together. My favorite, of course, is XML, and you can never have a webinar without um, saying XML, sort of like you can never have a party without ice cream cake. Um, now, our, our, we have a true data integration platform or solution. doesn't matter whether you're on the desktop, whether it be... Windows or Linux and Mac. In 2014, we actually have Workbench and everything on all three of those platforms. Is that available? Windows, Linux, when and When is that going to be available? You can download the beta now. Wow. So, yeah. So, if you want to play with it natively on the Mac or Linux, go for it. We also have a server, of course, which is for the enterprise. Again, all the authoring is done on the desktop. So, that's where you always start, get your stuff going. What's, and that, then, what's that cloud thing? Um, FMECloud.com. We now um, make it really easy for you. We are um, using Amazon Web Services. We provide FME server in the cloud on a pay-as-you-go hourly kind of thing. Cool. And so you can check that out too. So um, BIM and 3D, of course, is exciting. And um, we're working really hard on that kind of stuff as well. Point clouds, non-spatial. You know, 
Um, you can tell we're a spatial company because we refer to data without spatial as non-spatial. All that so other <laughs> stuff. All that other stuff, yeah. 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 So uh, anyway, that's a little bit about uh, FME. But today we're going to focus mostly on XML and I guess a bit of cloud. You can oh, I like about. it. We're going to focus on XML. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. it. <laughs> we're going to focus on web services of which, uh, yeah, you'll see JSON and XML client all over the place. Yeah. So the real power of FME, though, is um, you, we have this great authoring environment. Um, no code, you know, if you understand your data, if you understand data, you grab data, you can just go build workflows really, really quickly, and um, and that's really the uh, thing. Automation, automation, automation. I have a 10 transformer rule. I'm not allowed to build workspaces with more than 10 transformers. So that really keeps me focused on making sure... I like to use, sometimes I have to use a few more because I haven't yeah. quite achieved the zen of 10, but... Uh, oh, I like that, the zen of 10, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm working on it, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's so anyway. better. So yeah, so the big thing there is no code, right? We don't want to um, and you, force people to learn code. Now we do, if you do no code um, and you do want to write code, or there might be some cases that are really specific where you need to write code, you can do it in Python, TCL, and of course you can get really fancy with uh, writing your own format. If you're, yeah, if you're kind of addicted to code and you're slowly trying to you know, wean yeah. yourself off of it, you can still call a few yeah. Python scripts and stuff as That's you right. need to. Yeah. So Dean, you want to launch the first poll? So the first one is, how long have you been using FME? All right. Select a poll there. How long have you been using FME? Launch. Okay, so um, the, first quite, the first one is um, less than one year. Uh, okay. And the next one is one to three years. Um, four plus years, so you would be a, uh, a, big, uh, a big FME user there. Or I am not currently an FME user. So are, is anybody answering? People are, oh, so that means they must be able to see it. So that's a good thing. Looks like we've got a pretty uh, mature audience there. Yeah, uh, look might, at that. Might be and, more. Um, you know, again, we're seeing almost about 20% of people who have not used FME. So thanks for coming, taking time to check us out. Okay, so let's close that poll and let's share the results. And you'll see that um, about well, 40% of you have used this for more than four years. About 20% are not currently an FME user. And then 17% less than a year. Um, so th those of you who are... Um, new to FME or haven't used FME, remember to use our support. We're here to help you. And unlike other software companies, we really do spend a lot of effort. We focus as much effort on support as we do in product development. Um, I, the only reason I, I, I um, identify you, that if you've been using us for one to four years, probably you already know that. Yeah. But if you don't, then please uh, please challenge us with your, uh, your questions. Well, we've got so many experienced users there. Perhaps if we have a question, we, we had some way of asking them. But. Yeah, okay, you want to close that, hide that? Okay, so now if you are new to FME or you just want to, um, you know, have a webinar with Craig Vernon, he's the guy on the right there, and uh, I know many of you are Craig Vernon fans. Um, not not to say anything bad about Mark Stokes there, but uh, but Mark's but, yeah. a great one who has webinars with Craig. Yeah. Then then we have that weekly, and uh, there's the link there, so you can attend a net weekly FME overview webinar. And again, that just starts at the basics about what desktop is and what FME is and things like that. So, right. um, and it's usually a small group, say 10 to 20, and so it's great for questions and um, things like that. So there's, there's a whole slew of uh, getting started resources out there. Absolutely, like, like, like this one, yeah. yeah. So also we have a community, FMEpedia. Um, follow us on Twitter, at Safe Software. There's the, the knowledge base there uh, is also, that's FMEpedia.com. Basically any problem you have, just search in there, or I sometimes just Google FMEpedia and yep. XML yep. and all sorts yep. of wonderful stuff comes up, lots yep. of examples with data. Yeah, yep. and of course our blog, blog.safe.com has a new uh, new look to it, and it has great success stories, so if you want to know if people are using FME or learn about things about where we're going and things like that, you got to check that out as well, of course. And if you want to watch, uh, would this webinar go on to FME channel? Absolutely, yeah. this webinar will go on to FME channel, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. 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 We may have to do it ourselves, Dean, but no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to really boil it down really simple and just say, what is a web service? Okay, so here we go. It's really basic stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of, it's basically an HTML request is sent to a server, a web server, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, the web server gets the, it gets the request. It could have parameters if it's a, if it's a post. It could it will have a body with some with a package of data, commonly XML mm -hmm. or JSON, and then the server simply grinds it and sends it back. And so that's really as simple as it is. Our approach to web services is we like um, all the other format, all the other data types. 
we work to hide all the details from you so you can just focus on the data that you're getting. Same thing for web services. We want to remove the mystery. We don't want you to have to write code when you're connecting to a web service. And um, we have these great data inspectors and workspace runners and not now, if you, if you do to... need, uh, you know, one of the problems, uh, the challenges I find, like even preparing for this webinar, there's so many different flavors of these uh, oh, servers yeah. out there. Yeah, I know. So if you do have to get under the hood and adjust things, we give there's a lot of configuration yeah. Yeah. ability there. Yeah. So and we're going to show you some ArcGIS Online transformers that we yeah. wrote, and we made those transformers for you, which we'll get into, without ourselves writing any code. We just used FME to to do that. So we'll dive a little bit into that. And, uh, but again, the whole idea is... Well, I just want to just go back one slide there, Don. I just wanted to make, uh, to stress the uh, fourth point there, uh, and we'll see this in, in one of the later demos. Yeah. Uh, and this, this is a bit of a shift in thinking from, uh, it takes a bit of uh, getting used to just to get uh, the idea, is that a workspace can in fact become a web service because it can accept input uh, in the data input uh, the readers yep. and it, and it, any output that it generates, any XML that it writes, can become a web service. So we'll see examples of that, how to do that with yeah. published parameters. That's right. So you're going to use very, very you're cool. going to show how we can create any web service with FME, and you're going to use WFS as your example. Right. But you've done we've done other ones. We've done SOS. Um, you know, OBS, WPS, WPS. Yeah. You know, all yeah. these different things. That's right. That's all right. Okay. Good. Good. So, and of course, we have some transformers that help you rip apart the packages that you get um, as part of web service, either building them to send to a web service or getting the response back. Again, we don't want you to have to learn XQuery or J JavaScript or jQuery or whatever, it is, whatever kind of query language or XSLT or anything like that. So we built these really nice building block transformers to enable you to well, do and, and then reality, while it might be easiest if you have all your data already in GML and you can publish a WFS off it, in reality, often people want to set these things up on top of their uh, databases, their yes, spatial right. databases. So yeah. we give you a lot of tools to transform sort of from the relational model yeah. of data to uh, more of that object-oriented XML. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And we have a, a variety of other transformers. These HTTP, Fetcher, Uploader, HTTP, Star, there's a number of them. Those are really the guys you use to make your REST calls. Yeah. And um, like the fetcher, you build a URL, you send, you make a REST call, it's going to give you a response, you store that in an attribute, and away you go. Now you can start shredding it and working with it and things like that. And then there's some specific ones, image fetcher. Even um, Twitter. Twitter, we about? have. Yeah, yeah, Twitter's a common one. So we've just, rather than you having to do the, that yourselves, we uh, we just bundled it up in a nice collection. So, so now if you, you want to tweet, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can make it look yeah, like yeah. you're very active on your Twitter. And That's right. In fact, it's just an FME workspace yeah. updating yeah. your status. And similarly with ArcGIS Online, we um, we packaged up a number. They're on FME Store, so you, everybody who has FME, click a button, down they come, and you can use them immediately. You can see how we did it so that you can build your own. And please let us know if there's other services out there you want us to hit. And we can, you know, we have a group here, and we just um, package them up ourselves, and away we go. You know, for on a roadshow, for example, we were talking to the Tesla um, server, and that mm -hmm. has a REST API, and we didn't make any specific Tesla transformers, but we, we because it was very simple. Yeah. And the XHTML, you can actually use that for web scraping. So if you yeah. get a, an HTML table, you can convert it to XML so that you can do the X, use the XML transformers on yep. it. So, Sounds yeah. great. So lots of ways of interacting with web transformers. And this is just sort of some of the web formats that we can work with directly. You know, Salesforce, of course, is out there. We, we have a Salesforce reader and writer, again, making it easy for you. Um, OData, Dropbox, KML, Code some, to be some in. Some new uh, Google stuff, too, as well. Yeah, Google uh, Map Engine yeah. is, uh, is um, coming up soon. And um, anyway, we just keep adding them. You know, they're very simple for us to add. And, um, and once I Dropbox, what's that doing there? Yeah, we'll, we'll see that a little bit later. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, of course, then there's a, on the Amazon. There's just a whole bunch of things there, like Redshift and DynamoDB. There's just the number of web sort of for, we use the word format, but it gets web sources format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so again, in a picture, how that works is basically a URL goes to some sort of software called a web server. The web server does a grinding and sends the response back, and that's all it is. So, the um, you know, and that's you can think of um, you know, even an FTP request. Is, is it going to some FTP server somewhere that's just basically going to map it to a file and send it back? Nobody says that the files or anything has to be static. It could be static or dynamic. Nobody, the client doesn't so the know. Client, the client doesn't know if it's like a new server yeah. or what, what's at the back end. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. 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 
And so the services we're going to look at this morning are these ones. Some of them are going to be consuming, so FTP, HTTP, OData. Um, Dean's first going to ca um, com ca consume OGC, WFS, and SOS. And then I'm going to, we're going to look at leveraging ArcGIS Online, so we'll actually call out to ArcGIS Online. And then last but not least, we're going to show how you can use FME with workspaces to do what you talked about earlier, and that's creating any kind of web service using yeah, FME Yeah, we have trouble describing it, but I, I guess yeah. it's just sort of like a generic web service that yeah. you can basically do whatever to you want. To mimic anything, yeah, 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 so. Okay, so now a question for you, Launch Dean. What web service protocols do you have experience using? And after this, uh, these polls, we're going to dive right into a bunch of demos for you. So what do we got there? We got uh, RSS, Atom, REST, OData. Nobody's picked other. WebSockets, so very few people there. WebSockets is big, by the way, in 2014. We're, we're not going to demo it here this morning because um, this is a 2013 session. But coming up in um, 2014, as part of FME Server, we now ship a WebSocket server and another, a number of key transformers within FME to make it really easy for you to consume WebSocket data or produce a WebSocket uh, um, server. Yeah, so maybe, service. who knows, maybe someday yeah. soon yeah. there'll be a. Yeah, web oh server. boy, we're doing, we're demoing old data and nobody really cares. But you know what, Dean? It's our demo, so we're going to sort of like, it's my party and I can cry if I want to. <laughs> okay, so you're going to. It's like a horse race. So you're going to close between, that. Uh, uh, close that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rest is big. No so OGC service. and uh, and then a close second is uh, rest. rest. Yeah. yeah. RSS. Yeah. So there we go. Okay, so hide those polls. Okay, so thank you so much for, uh, for that. Okay, now one more poll and then we're into demo time. How are you currently using web services? Okay, launch that poll. Consuming, publishing, leveraging, transforming, I don't currently use. Okay. So, so, okay, here we go. Okay, most people are consuming. Ah, consuming and publishing, very, are neck and neck. And then leveraging is 16, transforming. So this is select all that applies. So I guess people who consume or publish. Yeah, that, that, that's right. It's, it might be a good idea if you publish to once in a while to consume to make sure you actually you're, it's publishing correctly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there we go. There we go. So that's great. Okay, so we've close. got 70 yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah, close and share. Okay, go. so there you can see consuming and publishing are you know, about, about the same, 66 to But there might be some potential there uh, for people to transform web services yeah, or even yeah, like yeah. combine Leveraging, them. leveraging, yeah. yeah what, consuming and leveraging is... is we might be a semantic difference there, and we're gonna we're gonna explain what we we'll, think we'll, the difference yeah, is. We'll yeah. what, and then right. transforming, and um, I currently I don't use. So anyway, so that's great. Okay, so here we go. So what's our first demo? So our first demo is gonna be really really simple. Okay, so we're gonna just um, show how easy it is to consume. Um, um, FTP or HTTP. There's tons of data just scattered all over the web. And um, we really want to show how easy it is to uh, to consume this data. So I'm going to the City of Vancouver data catalog, and I find that just by going City of Vancouver open data, okay, and there it is there, and I'll view the list of data sets, and I'm going to go down, and we're going to find some some food vendors, okay, and we're going to say, whoops, we don't want to do that, okay. Come on, baby. Okay. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay. There we go. Copy, link, location. Okay, I didn't really want to do that, but anyway, we're there. Okay, so now we're going to start FME. And this is the workbench. Obviously, we're not going to do much with, uh, um, with it. So this is the, uh, we're just going to do some basics. This is just showing um, the workbench. This is where we're going to do the authoring. I'm also going to, in this one, I'm just going to use the data inspector for us to look at it. And I'm going to say file, open data set, and I'm going to say Excel, and I'm going to paste in this value. And you'll notice that it's an Excel spreadsheet, but it's on an FTP site. Um, with FME, you don't, we don't care whether it's a local file or on FTP. It's just data. We, we, it's just data. Yeah. And now I'm just going to see, look at it here. You can see the preview. The first row has the field name, so I'm going to go like that. Okay. And now you'll see that in this data set there is some latitude and longitude. Okay, so latitude is Y, longitude is X, so that looks fine. Okay, 
And now I'm going to say OK. And then, oh, the coordinate system, of course, it's good to tell what the coordinate system is. Excel has no way to do that. So there we go. We say um, OK. And what's that in the bottom right corner? We got that uh, the new uh, table view going on there. Yeah, that's yeah. I'll I'll explain that. And you'll see one thing that comes up is the background map. So because this had location, and I tagged the coordinate system, um, what we're seeing here this is actually ArcGIS Online background maps, and you can see um, you know which is great when you're looking at spatial data because you can actually now have context right away. You can have context to see where these things are. Rather than in the past, you would just have dots on a blank screen, and yeah, you know you read the data, but um, maybe you got your X Y mixed uh, up, and it might not yeah, be too obvious. Yeah. So now, th now we have a table view as well, which was big for for 20, 2013. Um, I think it was SP one or SP two, and so now you can also see you know the Excel data here as well, which is really really. Um, really handy so that's that so I'm almost done this demo there's one more thing I want to show and that's Dropbox okay what about Dropbox um, so I have a Dropbox file here and this is my um, and I can say copy public link okay because again you might have a workflow where you're pushing things to Dropbox and of course FME doesn't care it can um, just as easily um, work with that so I'll go file open data set and in this case, I'll put that one in there. And if I go to the front of it, you'll see this one's not FTP. This one's HTTPS. And again, I can click here, and it's going to load the worksheet. It might might take if it takes a little bit longer. That's nothing to do with FME. That's actually just the uh, the provider of the data. There it is. There. And I'm going to click on this one, and um, and so on. And then we can. Um, I'll just close this. Okay. And then we'll do that again here. There's a bit of a problem with this one. That is fixed, but I'm using, um, okay, so file, new, okay, nope, not that one, sorry, here we go. Okay, we're going to get to that one a little bit later. File, open data set, Excel, and I'll paste this in here. And at the front again, you'll see this is Dropbox, HTTPS, you can see the mm. Dropbox there. So it's not the FTP, and again, this loading part is not us, it's the... Uh, you know, the great thing about web services is you're not responsible for the endpoints and uh, yeah. the data, and sometimes that can, um, you know, that can... That sometimes can, that's a good thing, sometimes... Yeah, uh, <laughs> like when I'm doing the OData one, um, which nobody seems to care about anyway, I'm going to... Um, I'm sure there's I have, a, I have a backup because um, I know that sometimes things come and go, so you always got to be, uh, be a little bit careful. Yeah, you might want to... So anyway, there you go, and if I click here... You can see that um, I was reading the data again, and uh, there we go. So that's now, could uh, you could you uh, write to Dropbox if you had a public folder? Yeah, yeah. you could you could do that as well. So you so, you yeah. could actually just in, in desktop, you could be writing to a file that a whole bunch of people are looking at effectively. You could becoming a server. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do that. So okay, so I think that's let's see. Yeah, so we did it. We well look at all that. That was quick. And again, the point of this was just to show you how easy it is to start accessing data that's on the web. You don't have to get, uh, you don't have to get fancy. Okay, so now slideshow from current slide. So that was the first one. Okay, now we're going to do um, O data. Now I'm also going to do data. RSS at the same time, just because I anticipated that maybe people didn't really want to see about O data. But again, it doesn't matter. That what we're really trying to do here is it's not about O data. It's about how easy, how we're removing the whole barrier to what the format is. Similar to how we've done on the desktop, now we're attacking the web the same way. We don't really, you shouldn't as a user care whether it's an OData, WFS, or whatever. Just point and go. And so yeah. that's what we're going to do. We're going to do, uh, we're going to do here. So, okay. So now back over here. And again, on this one, I'm going to say um, RSS. We'll start with an RSS feed. Okay, so let's find one. Ah, CBC. Here's a CBC RSS feeds. And let's. Um, everybody likes sports, so let's. Uh, we'll just pick sports. So this is just copy. XML. Yeah, this is just XML. But the user, we do, again. Uh, there's so much RSS data out there. Um, the users, we don't even. We just hide all that from the user in this case. So we could. We could use an XML. We could just use a text file reader pointed at the R, at the feed, and then get it and rip apart the XML ourselves. But it's so common. We've done it for people. Yeah. So this is Workbench, and Workbench is the, the environment 
where you bring data together, do something with it, whereas the data inspector we saw last time was just how to in inspect the data. We'll look right. at that data in Workbench a little bit later. First thing you always do is you add one or more readers. So here I'm going to add a reader. I'm going to add RSS. Okay, you know, so it says GeoRSS or whatever. And I'm going to paste in my um, RSS feed. And um, that's all we need to do. Okay, sometimes we, we have these dialogues, but where possible, we make them so you don't have, you can just accept the defaults. Okay, sometimes you can go in and do other stuff. But uh, but um, in general, a good start is just to see what's going on there. Okay, so we're just going to take both of them, you know, because we don't know, really know what's going on. And um, again, all I'm going to do is, in this case, I'm just going to connect it to a logger, and we'll connect it to an inspector. Just so we, we could have a whole bunch of downstream processing here. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Even looking something up, joining with that's the database. That's right. That's right. And I'm just going to show here again how, because this is really supposed to be an OData demo. Yeah. <laughs> So what I'm going to show here is just how easy it is to, so here's the view. Okay, I just grabbed the feed name. I didn't grab the entries there here. But if I look in the log file, something that's also very nice and helps you debug is you're going to see wherever there's an HTTP or a URI, mm -hmm. we highlight it. So now if I click it, we can see there's the story that that one was on. And again, when you're working with web services, quite often you end up with URLs swinging back and forth. If you log them, now you can click on them to see if you're making progress. And I found this very useful to see if the URLs that are building even, like sometimes you're building a URL for a REST call, mm -hmm. you can log and then you can click on and see if it's valid and right. um, things like that. And then you get, you know, it's, it's really, really speeds up the whole development of things. So anyway, so that's, that's it for that one. Okay, so now we're going to go into OData. Okay, a trick to restart, I always like to just close me, close me. and then it just comes back again, fresh. Okay, so now we're going to do some OData. So again, it could be any reader. We're going to go reader, add reader, and we're going to say here, we're going to say OData. What exactly is OData? It's an open data. Um, is it XML? What is, what's coming back? Yeah, it is XML. I, I believe it says XML. Everything's XML, Dean. You know that. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... Okay, so I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna reset to my defaults. Uh oh, no, I didn't really want to have to take that in, but I guess I will. Okay, here we go. So it's um, HTTP colon slash slash live dot inetta dot org slash inet uh, live service. live service dot sf svc, and we'll know soon enough whether I type that in properly. Okay. Okay, because we'll click here and get the feed list. Okay, we did. We're going to go for the live tags. Okay, I had another one, but I tested just a few minutes ago, and uh, the service was down. Oh. Which if you're, so if you're ever doing a web service demo, you better have more than one um, target you can go to because you're not in control of the endpoints. Okay, yeah. so there we go. So we're going to say that. So it makes, it okay. always makes every it adds presentation just a little bit, yeah, live. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you can see we this isn't a particularly um, interesting one. But I'm going to start to now demonstrate a little bit about what um, the, the, the desktop workbench can do. This is where you do all your authoring. So first of all, it's always good to connect an inspector. Okay, we're going to run this. And, um, and there we go. There's no geometry in this view, so I click here and I can see the tags. So now what I want to do is I'm going to, I want to sort this. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort this. We're going to write um, to Excel just because it's non-spatial data. Mm -hmm. Excel seems to be the most popular. We'll put the top 15 in one tag, the bottom, the rest in another one and everything in the other one. And um, again, um, we have a whole bunch of transformers, but the way I like to use this, okay, I want to sort first. So mm -hmm. I type sort. So there's a sorter, and I'm going to sort by presentation count. So I pick the attribute presentation count. I want to go de new, um, numeric, <coughs> and I want to go descending. Right. Good enough. So now I want to break it up. So let's put a sampler in here. Okay. And of course, there might be other ways of doing things in FME. But I'm going to say let's sample. And I want to take the first uh, 15 features. Okay. Yeah, that's what you said. Yep. The first 15. And now I want to write to Excel. Okay. There's a big Excel webinar coming up next week. So that promises to be a really popular one. And um, we'll yeah, it's call amazing it. how many people use Excel. Oh, wait. It's, Excel is like. Is really like the FME of non-spatial, I That's would say. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, there we go. Because people use Excel um, for just everything, and there's gazillion. Anyway, am I going to add a new feature type here? No, because I'm just going to duplicate this, the desk, the source. So Control C, Control V. Whoops. Control C, Control V. Well, anyway, we'll go like this. We'll say duplicate and writer. 
So and that's kind of what a typical workspace looks like, eh? So you yeah. got the data yeah. source on the left, a yeah. bunch of transformation yeah. steps. Yeah, now I want I want two more of these, right? Because yeah. I want one. This one's going to be called top 15. So these are going to become tabs, top 15. Whoops, mm -hmm. top 15. And then this one, next one's going to be um, all. We'll call it all. Or the rest or something. I'll call it all. Yeah, okay. and then the next one would be the rest, right? Um, so, whoa. Okay, oh, come on, baby. Come on, man. Move this guy out of the way. Okay, so this one is, um, we'll call this uh, um, over 50, whatever. Okay, sure. Yeah, naming is always the most controversial thing in any webinar. Okay, so this is over 15, so this goes here, but this also goes into all. Okay, and then this one also goes into all. Okay, there we go. I run it, and um, bing, bang, bong. Okay. Um, we can see them here, but it's more it's more fun to look at the um, the output. So and let's so. go here demos. Um, this is O data output and September 10. There you go, and you'll see we have three tabs: top 15. They're sorted. All is sorted, and over. Um, oh, should have been under 15. Well, it doesn't really matter. But anyway. Um, the ones that are out. Oh. oh, yeah, over 15. That's right. Over 15 six, six, in, terms uh, in terms of sequence. There oh, we go. So there we go. Size, yeah. So you can see that's as easy as it is. Um, of course, we could have been fancier with all the formatting, but uh, tune in for the Excel webinar next week for that. Okay, so that is it. That's, uh, you know, you can start to see how easy it is with FME to work with data. I, we sorted it, we sampled it, we transformed it, we took something simple, and all this came live. All these demos so far have been live, and all the data you're going to get for the demos I'm doing, none of it exists um, locally. It's all, it's all remotely. Okay, so that's the OData one. So back to the show. From so what's current, next? Let's have a look. It always wants to go there. That wasn't the current slide. Anyway, okay, you ready? Now we're going to... Dean, and Dean's going to show us how to consume WFS. Yeah, so I think the OGC one got a few, a few oh. votes, so maybe we should uh, have a Yeah, look no, that. this is big, and you're going to do SOS after that. So That's this is right. big. This is big. So, so let's uh, make me a presenter. Oh, right. Okay, do you make yourself I think a presenter? I did. Look at that. He just and stole I'm gonna it. I'm going to show my screen. Yeah, I just, he just ripped pulled, the, pulled that rug out from under your yeah. feet there. Okay, take it away. So what do we got? Um, back to the data inspector. Right off the top, all I'm going to do is uh, look at a uh, uh, an Inspire web server, and just to show how easy that is to consume. And okay. uh, basically, I just paste pasted in the URL. In this mm -hmm. case, to a degree, uh, mm -hmm. Inspire server. And these dialogues are going to improve in 2014. We now have collapsible, so that you don't have to look at stare at everything. And you can see this is a really big list of uh, data layers, many Inspire layers here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're just going to have a look at uh, one of them. Mm -hmm. Cadastral parcels. Perfect. And there's lots of options Do here. Do you want to explain the SRS access order and why that's important when working with WFS, Dean? Ah, thanks for reminding me. I almost forgot to change that. So the problem with uh, um, GML specifically is that it does the schema doesn't define the access the order. The OGC schema, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there is really no way that the client knows what the access order is until it actually starts consuming the data. So that could be a problem if you're putting it on the background map. Yeah, so if you find your data somewhere off of the Arabian Peninsula and it's not supposed to be there, well, maybe you've got the access order wrong. So, mm, okay. Yeah. Now, what is it possible that a web service could return features in both one like X Y and Y X? Have you ever seen that? Yeah, that's particularly uh, nasty. Um, you you in GML, it is valid to have the coordinate system uh, on e each feature. You can mm -hmm. have an SRS mm -hmm. uh, dimension mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. uh, SRS system all in one, uh, all differing from record to record. So. Theoretically, in FME, we could detect the coordinate system per feature and reproject yeah. as needed. But of course, we would encourage WFS producers not to do that. Yeah, just because you can do doesn't it really doesn't mean, always it. It really drives clients should. nuts if every if different <laughs> features have different coordinate orders. Yeah. So what are you doing here? So you're hitting a, 
a web service um, published by Degree. Is that the one you're hitting? In this yeah, case? it's okay. kind of their Inspire uh, okay. demo server. Yeah. And you can yeah. see, like you mentioned, the blue URLs going by. Yeah. Uh, if ever something doesn't work, you can always copy and paste it into yeah. a web browser, yeah. and maybe yeah. the server's yeah. down. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, the schema, there's, a, there's a yeah. errors in the schema. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we've hit web services, WFS servers from, you know, all the vendors that we can find, um, Oracle most recently, um, you know, Degree. Yeah. You know, open, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the Open Geo stack. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, all, all that yeah, stuff. Geo yeah. server, Esri's, of course. Map server. Map server. Just yeah, yeah. So and so, if you um, you know, try FME on them. If you have any tr any trouble with them, because each server it has its own little idiosyncrasies. We you know pride ourselves in making sure they all work. But if you ever run into a problem, again, this is where our great support comes in. Please do let us know that, hey, this didn't work. And uh, we have gr um, folks here who their life is basically making sure that everything OGC, GML, XML, JSON uh, is the best in the industry. So I just wanted to highlight here is that we're not just getting back the data. You can see it's correctly referenced because some of these are overlaid directly on the roads. Mm -hmm. So you can see, okay. Can you zoom in a little tighter there, Dean? All right. Sorry, my eyes are getting... Yeah. Okay. So, and again, you're using a background map. There. Yeah, this is a Stanton map. So okay. this is the freebie one. You don't okay. need an account for it. You just you just set it up in uh, in uh, FME options here in the viewer. Okay. Uh, but I wanted to really highlight that we're not just getting the geometry. Uh, we're also getting the fair, the complex data model. So we right. basically allow you to extract uh, the full complexity yeah. of the yeah. uh, the Inspire yeah. schema. Mm -hmm. And then you could take these and map it into, let's say, a relational database if you mm -hmm. wanted to update mm -hmm. uh, your mm -hmm. database based mm -hmm. on that. So that's mm -hmm. just a simple WFS. Okay. And, uh, so I think. Um, and of course, we support. You can read. You can pull in WCS, WMS, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and any other web service WPS, out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if and if it's not even a format that you see in the drop list. It's relatively straightforward to compose, as yep. we'll see in a few minutes, how to compose a, um, make, basically, you make your own custom formats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So now next, Dean's going to do um, SOS. We won't go back to the deck, because all it says is oh, that okay. it's yeah. a lot of work to make me the presenter, just so that we can say next you're going to do SOS. Okay. So, so, the, so with SOS, FME itself does not actually ship with an SOS um, reader, as we call them. No, we do doesn't. have a WFS, but we don't ship with an SOS. So talk a little bit about SOS. Why don't we have an SOS? Like, what's what's some of the issues with SOS? Well, what I found in in the last you know few months working with this is that uh, uh, every SOS service seems to be a little bit different in terms of how they are implemented. Right. Uh, you know, there's there's slightly different standards. So um, you know. So that would mean special code for each. And every SOS. Yeah, and in fact, when I went online uh, preparing for this, I, you know, and if anybody has a good SOS client out there, I, I couldn't find a, just just a a generic one. Generic one. Yeah. You know, yeah. lots of people yeah. are interacting yeah. with SOS programmatically. Yeah. With code or maybe yeah. open yeah. layers yeah. or something. That's kind of brutal. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so you created an SOS format yourself. Yeah. But again, how much code did you write? Well, I'm sorry, but I don't have. It's not very impressive. I basically didn't write any code. Okay. For okay. So I just, I just. So you used FME somehow yeah, to create your own SOS workspace. format. Okay. So you can see here. Uh, you know, these are the standard requests get capabilities described sensor. I'm just going to go ahead and get observations. Okay. So you're hitting. Uh, so this is Noah's SOS. Yeah. Uh, this is a, sort of like a mirror. Yeah. Of, so uh, what Noah's is SOS? SOS? SOS is a measurement service. Yeah. It's so a what's sensor a, observation service. That's right. So it's not. It's not like real time events. It, but what it is, if you want to check the, the value of a sensor anywhere, you can query it. So in this case, you're going to look at elevation tide yeah, or, or yeah, surf tide or so whatever, beside, wave height. Okay, okay. Besides those requests, when I go to uh, get observation, yeah. in this case, I can choose uh, wave height, temperature, wind speed. That's right. That's right. And so, so if you're following things, you could query this uh, periodically just to see what's going yeah. on. And, you know, like you could have river, run of river, River height sensors, and then you could um, just pull them every once in a while to see how you're. So it's not. It's, but it's not going to generate. It's an alert. almost. It's almost live. It's not quite live. It basically yeah. gives you the latest value. In That's this case. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and look for wave heights. Uh, uh, my story is I'm gonna. You know, after work today, I want to go surfing somewhere. Yeah. So uh, I want to find where are the biggest waves. So let's have right. a quick look here. And uh, I hope I, you have one of these um, Elon Musk. Um, <clears throat> hyperloop things to get you wherever you need to be. Yeah. 
So you're looking all over North America, aren't you? I'm looking uh, at uh, the yeah the entire the or the entire planet. Oh, just the Pacific. Okay. So there you go. I got to fly off the Aleutian Islands there, and I've got a wave height of 4.2 meters. That would be some good surfing. That's right. Maybe I'll look for one or two more here, a little closer to the coast. There's another one. Uh, yeah. Another one. Yeah. So how are you finding them? Go. Are you able to California? So you're, in this case, you're using the table view, and you're clicking on the measurement column to sort it. Yeah, and that's another great thing about this. You know, for years FME never had a table view. Now we have this table view, which enables you to really start inspecting the data on a whole new level. And the in the past, your data inspection was um, purely spatial. You would zoom into an area, see what's going on. Now we've added with the table view, you can start to inspect your data on other columns. So in this case, Dean isn't zooming in on an area. He just wants to find the highest wave height. And so by clicking on that column and sorting it. He's able to uh, 27. Whoa, what's going on there? Well, I, I wasn't too excited about surfing off of uh, uh, Alaska. It's a bit cold, so yeah. I just wanted to see where the warmest water was. So ah, that's, so that's the temperature. Water, so. Yeah, yeah. So, so can you just and this actually does show us what you did in your workspace there? And I just wanted to point out it is nearly live. These are observations from. Yeah. Well, this yeah. is GMT, so yeah, it's a few hours ago. So if you want to look at the web, the workspace, yeah, we won't quickly. walk. We don't have time to walk through it, but just to just to open up. So so this is Dean's SOS client that enables him to read any SOS. Um, this one's for Noah. Now, if you hit another one, what you would have to do is go in and change some of these boxes a little bit. But yeah, the point it's not is, is that it, it's an order of magnitude at least easier than having, than to, go having to write code. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Basically, I'm just uh, fetching these parameters. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I provide this to the uh, the user just has to set the values of what they want in terms of the bounding box and the observations, uh, the, the request type, and ultimately that gets built into yeah. a URL. Yeah. With the with the concatenator. And then the rest call gets, is made with the HTTP. Fetcher. That's it. Yeah. yeah. The HTTP fetcher is key because um you build URLs and he's the guy that sends the request to the server to get the response back, and we'll see a little bit more of that. And then the, the, the key configuration step was just figuring out how to slice up the uh, SOS yeah. response that came back. Yeah. I just split up by value components, and depending on what was in there, yeah. uh, if it had a, a point ID, it became a point. Yeah. And so I have the point adder to generate yeah. the point, and if it just has an observation value, it becomes an observation with those values. And then I have a feature merger, which brings, brings the them back together and the sensors together. Because there's a common ID across. Yep. Yep. And yeah. that's it. So that's it's not it. too bad. No, I mean, it no. doesn't quite fit no. the 10, but we're at about 15. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. I mean, I'm not scared of that. And um, of course, all this is available for you. So if you want to start playing around with re um, consuming SOS services. Yeah. And if you get this and you hit an SOS service and you, have, you, you want us to help you configure it, great. Let us know and we'll configure it. What we're going to do is we'll put this one on the store. So there'll be a NOAA one, and then over, and then we can add more and more. Yeah, so, and then so, you, and if then, you have two or three, you can see how they differ, and that right, might help. That's you right. That's right. Figure. And if you do build one for another SLS service, please send it to us, and we will um, put it on the store. So you want me to the presenter again, there, Dean? You're up next. I'm up okay. next. Let's see. Okay. What going on here? Okay. So he's going to make me the presenter. Okay. So we just saw that. So now I'm going to show how to. Uh, to work with um, leveraging now, and we're going to look at ArcGIS Online. So I'm going to build a demo. We've already seen ArcGIS Online as background maps. Now I'm going to show how to leverage some of the other great services of ArcGIS Online um, um, right now. So here we go. So I'm going to build this from scratch again. So I'm going to basically throw this guy away. Yeah, and start fresh. Okay. So again, I'm going to work with data that's on the web. So I'm going to grab fire halls and those food vendors, and then we're going to find out what food vendors are within a minute of a fire hall. Now, is that so that the firemen can get food? or? Well, that's, that would be a good idea. I was actually thinking about that. And um, if, um, if you were a food vendor, you might want to be close to as many fire halls as you possibly oh, could. That's true. And there are some food of... vendors that are actually within two, two, one minute of two fire halls because firemen have to eat like anybody. And, um, you know, and, but, so, but sometimes those food sometimes vendors... Sometimes they, they, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of time. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the fire halls. Now, this one's a shape file. Okay, so I'm going to copy the link location, go to FME, uh, main. And again, I'm, I'm basically, I could read a shape file, but I want to show you how to read a shape file that's on the web. 
Okay, so I'm paste that in there. Oh, You'll notice zip. it's yeah. a zip. Yeah. So is that yeah. is that gonna work? Do it's gonna to... work. FME does. FME will figure it out. FTP colon could be HTTP colon doesn't matter. FME will figure it out. I'm telling you it's a shape, so then it says zip. Ah, okay. And um, again, defaults. We don't have to do anything there, so I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna say okay. And FME is gonna whir away. And here's the Firehall shape file. Okay. It's With its schema the, there. The, yeah. Exactly. So we could uh, inspect it, okay, connect an inspector and run it. And now we will see where those fire halls are, okay. But next what I want to do is I want to put a one-minute buffer around all those fire halls. Well, how the heck do you do that? Because I'm not talking buffering by feet. I'm talking buffering by, by time to travel. So I'm going to click on the link and I'm going to type arc GIS. And what you see is you see three transformers there. You see the ArcGIS Online Service Area Calculator. Um, it's in a funky color, which means it's from the store, but it was already downloaded. You can see there's other ones we have, the ArcGIS Online Geocoder. So mm -hmm. if you have addresses you want to geocode, you can use that one. And the other one is the Geo Enricher. And what that one does is for a point or area, it will add a bunch of attributes. You can specify the attribute sets to add to a point. So it could be demographics, for example. You know, you have a polygon or a place and you want to know the demographics, you hit this service and now the feature is going to come back with a whole bunch of extra attributes. But right now we're going to use the ArcGIS Online Service Area Calculator, put that in now there. Is the transformer free? Or? The transformer is free and they're from the store. Um, and then all you need is an ArcGIS um, online account. Okay, ah. so I'm going to reproject it. To, yeah, um, that's a little tricky. We'll fill. We're, we're we'll change that. We'll make it so you don't have to do that. Okay, and we're gonna say LL84. Okay, good. And that should be all I need there. And now I'm going to specify. I need a username and account, but you can get those from Esri. Okay, mm -hmm. safe. Or if you're already an Esri user, talk to your Esri guy. So we, um, Esri's been kind enough. To give us an account so we can demo this stuff. It's very, very cool. Okay. And of course, this isn't something you're going to algorithmically do because yeah. you need to know what's going on. And um, and now let's, we'll put a, um, an inspector here because there's lots of ways I could have messed up. Like I could have mistyped my password, for example. Right. So I'll just run this again. So that's the nice and, thing about Workbench. You can add yeah. views of your data anywhere through the, the Yeah, the it really flow. is. It really is build and spec. It really is iterative development. You know, like iterative. And there you can see with the background map, now you can really get a nice area. That's two minutes? With the, uh, one minute. One minute. Wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so now you can see the fire hall is nicely centered. And you can see, you can see some of them. Wow, it looks like, well, how can, can I get, well, one-way streets, there's lots of different downtown. Yeah, Vancouver. it could be a freeway or something. Yeah, big, yeah, yeah, fast road, slow road, all that good stuff. Um, and there we go. So that seems to have worked good. Okay, I should have said well. But anyway, okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to add the food again. So we, just to show you, you can add another reader. It doesn't have to be, you know, you can just go crazy with these readers. We have some demos that we've done for users where it's blatant, um, you know, um, reader abuse where we just basically have like 18 different kinds of readers in one workspace just for for fun okay I'm gonna paste this here again you know as we saw before this is an FTP so again nothing's on the machine now the other okay. key point here that occurred to me Don is that this isn't just about reading from or writing to that's web right services. Now we're actually interacting. Yeah, with live we're web making a call to a nice in the way, middle yeah, in of the a middle workspace. workspace. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. could start off That's with the right. WFS, then That's you could right. fire things back and forth to RGS yeah. Online, yeah. and then ultimately yeah. publish that as a web service. Exactly. So that's so, pretty exciting. So yeah, yeah you know, and cool. HTTP fetchers, uploaders. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. really, the sky's and, the limit um, there. Of course, we have to tag this because. Otherwise, the background maps don't know where it is, and right. Excel right. does no way of tagging the features. So, so there we have our um, our fire our um, food thing. So now we want to say we want to do a spatial join, finding out which areas are on there, on those one minute drive pile. Going. So again, the power of FME is this transformation. So I'm going to type point on area. Oh, there it is, and very simple. I simply grab these are the polygons, the areas. These are the points. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's all I do there. So that, and then what I, does that to do? That transfers the attributes from. Yeah, and it also, more importantly for me, 
is at this point is it gives me an overlap count, uh, which is the number of, it's going to give me the overlap count telling me for each point how many areas. Right. It would also give me the number of area, for each area, how many points. So it's very, very powerful. And, um, and so now I want to, um, we really only want the ones that are within an area, so I'll add a test, a test uh, filter here. Test, whoa, test filter. Okay, yeah, there. And we're simply going to say if, okay, if the overlaps is greater than zero, then we know we're within one fire hall, and we'll call this, you can call this whatever you want, yay, and we'll call this one um, nay, and like that, and we know that these ones, if I connect in the spectrum, of course we could go anywhere we want, we could go to any format of FME, but in, in, um, given the amount of time we have, we're going to have, um, we don't want to do that, so we'll call this um, within one mile. And um, so we're just again inspecting, and now you could write it anywhere. The point was really to show you how easy it is to start leveraging these uh, these wow. services. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we've yeah. got both by time and now uh, distance. You now we're we're doing the join to see how they're within. So anyway, within. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, we're, we're connecting to the background map here, mm -hmm. and uh, there we go. Okay, background map doesn't work, but that does not um doesn't matter. You'll see. Here's the. Uh, we'll turn off the turn off the fire halls. Here's the ones within one mile. Right. And if I turn off those one on those ones, you can see we got all the points that are within there. Okay, all the fire halls. There's other ones, but of course, not all of them had a point within. So basically, the 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 food vendors that are within one mile are here. Okay, so there we go. That's that, and uh, that's so. Now, only I just wanted to show one thing again. The key to all of this, if I edit again, we did this just like you did the SOS. We never wrote code. And the key thing, this one's interesting because, of course, it has authentication. So here's where we're using, again, an HTTP fetcher. Simply send our URL that we build. Um, you know, you can see the URL um, is being built here. Okay. And this time you're dealing with JSON. Yeah, this time we're dealing with JSON. And then we can use the token we get back to make subsequent calls in that, in that session. So, again, um, when you download these, you actually get these. So then you can use these as templates to build other ones. And, again, um, you know, we didn't have to write code. Um, you can, they can be extended very easily and um, things like that. So that is um, the ArcGIS Online. That's, that's, that's ArcGIS. leveraging, leveraging yeah, that's web right. services. Because even though FME can do a lot, you know, there's always there's there's information, there's yep. transformations yep. out there, and yep. why yep. not leverage them? That's right. Okay, Dean, you have 11 minutes. Okay. Well. Okay, you got five actually. Oh. Oh, that that shrank pretty quick. Yeah. Right. So anyway, so now Dean's going to publish web shows how to publish web service with any sir. Oh, I better make you the presenter. Go so what I'm going to do is I first of all show we'll, we'll do the uh, the WFS query. Yeah. And then I'll show you kind of how we how we did. Yeah. yeah. And right off the top, I've already got something on the screen here which shows data points from Aus Aus Austria, not Australia, Austria, and uh, Croatia and Italy. And you can see this is a geographic names uh, web service. It's actually just local on my desktop. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. done by a FME server. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why we went down this route is was because people were asking for um, extensions or yeah. Uh, yeah. improvements to our, our uh, WFS server. Yeah. Uh, in this case, it's for an X XML filters, which we didn't previously support. So if we have things like this here, which uh, you know, WFS one of the one of the challenges with WFS is that it's not really that great a uh, 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 protocol or standard for let's say downloading all your base data. No, 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 uh, no, no, it, no. Just don't do it. Yeah, ultimately. So it, it, it's actually yeah. a great idea if you can query by extents or if you can query by a value. Yeah. So for small for small for small amounts of data, it's fine. But if you're going to want to download a, you know ten million features. Go to a download. It's going it's really... to take a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to my own server, and you can see here this is running off of uh, this poor here. laptop. Yeah. Okay. So. So this is hitting your machine to get back the um, get feature types. Yeah, I mean, okay. I'm going to paste that URL in. Here. Yeah, typing it in is always a bit tricky. Yeah, there's no, uh, yeah, yeah, 
Okay, so cross our fingers. You haven't paused this lately, have you? Put it into hibernation mode? No. Okay. So we'll give you one more try and then we'll we can walk through which which should which, what should have been going <coughs> on there. Um what I could do is is uh quickly just do a restart there. Okay, so while you're doing that, I'll walk through what we're just some of the slides here. Um and uh, that'll be fine. And then let me know when you're ready to go. Yeah. Because that'll take the pressure off of you a bit. Okay. Okay. Make presentations. The other thing when you do webinars is you always have to be ready for for. Uh, okay. So yeah. Show my screen. Okay. So we're gonna just gonna just sort of a recap about what um what what oh, we're doing. Works. Yeah. Yeah. So so you can think of WFS. Really, there's a number of types of requests. One is get capabilities. And then so a simple and then it's going to respond to XML. Well you can cache that get capabilities because for any server, web WFS service, their get capabilities response is going to be the same thing. So with FME that's very easy. It sees a get capabilities request, just grabs a, an XML file that it already produced and then sends it back. So that's the first thing. The next one is describe feature type. Well that is returning back the XSD. So again, that can be a cached file. Um, so again with FME a WFS workspace. Um, you can have one. You have one. Typically, have one entry workspace per WFS. You can get the request and then send back um, send back the response very very quickly. The only one that has work, of course, and Dean alluded to this, is the get feature request. And the get feature request. Now you have bounding boxes. Now you you know you've identified the themes. Now you have um, filters and all that. But again, these requests are um, XML. Um, and um, there's no tool out there that can rip apart XML um, requests faster or more efficiently than FME. So um, again, that's exactly um, what we do. So um, with that, so that's sort of what Dean's going to show here. And um, in summary, there you go. And um, now I'll put it back to him, and then we'll get a, we'll have a poll question. So you ready to go now, Dean? Yeah, I'm ready to go. I think the one thing I forgot was to my authentication. So. Ah. <laughs> It doesn't help if you actually that's don't right. log in. Well, that in. goes to show you that uh, yeah. you know that not everything's open and, and free. So there we yeah. go. So I, I'm querying for get capabilities. So the the first thing I'm doing is going for uh, uh, what it, what layers are available, and uh, and then I just choose. And what I wanted to show you is that there I've got this filter expression in there, which just chooses data from Italy, and the that's the access order. So we'll just go ahead and fire that off. Okay. Okay. And the, so this is the thing that, just to get your uh, head around, is the idea that the same workspace is actually handling both the XML traffic around the feature requests and the responses, as well as uh, uh, the actual data itself. Okay. Okay. So I'll so, let that. Okay. And while that's churning, while that's I just wanted going, to show the. Uh, let's do the next. Let's do the next. I just part. wanted to show the workspace. Okay. Quick. Very quickly. We're running yeah. out of time, Dean. All right. So if I just have a quick look at the workspace, it's not that uh, complicated. Basically, all I have here is the request comes in. So I pull apart the URL based on what service the request is, what request type, and uh, uh, which what, what themes are, are requested. And ultimately, I just use a test filter to check for the request type. And if it's get feature, I can pull apart the bound, yeah, you know, yeah, do a query yeah. on the bounding box. I can yeah. pull apart that uh, XML filter expression. Yeah. And then ultimately, I can use a where clause built on that uh, XML filter expression uh, to, to do the query. Right. Good. And we'll make this and there's, available. And, and there's, there's the, the result, result. And you can see that it's only Italy now. Because you specified the filter. And uh, you can see yeah. all the data points there are Italy only. OK. Yeah. So that's great. So and that's, um, and that's coming just from the local uh, web server. Okay, so now we're going to go finish this up. One more quick poll, Dean. Sure. How are you interacting with web services now? Okay. And there we go. Launch the poll. And um, there's a number of answers. Number one is Java. Number two is uh, Python. We know there's great libraries in both of those. JavaScript, of course. Working with web services, often you're in a web browser environment, and so Java would expect JavaScript is going to be the biggest one. Yeah, oh, definitely. FME, and then um, 
thirty percent are hoping to work with web services without writing code. And, so and almost, yeah, yeah, about thirty percent. And and even as a coder myself, um, I know that the moment I crack open code, um, you know, my productivity has gone down. If I can just grab some quick things together, then I can mock them up. I can prototype them much quicker and just get going. And also, it's less brittle. I can change it as web services change because, as we all know, web services change quite a bit. Okay, close that and show. Thank you so much. And uh, there you go. JavaScript is half, and then a third of you um, don't really like to write code, and uh, and so there we so go. So there you go. Yeah. That, that yeah. gives okay. you uh, FME as uh... like that. So um, yeah. So anyway, there. And that was what Dean just shown, but only Italy because he did the filter. And uh, yeah, and also and, point, um, yeah, pointing out there that we've yeah. uh, we're flattening out those attributes right, to make it easy right, to right. consume. So there you go. Um, we hope we've given you, uh, you know, shown you how to get started with this stuff. Um, FME makes it easy to use, leverage, and produce web services. And um, with this thing that Dean just shown, you're going to hear be hearing more about that, the FME server approach to any web service, as we call it. And um, you know, it doesn't really matter what kind of web service you want to build. Um, we can do it, and um, FME is a no-code approach to web services. Yeah, so and just just the highlight from <coughs> is that you guys didn't get a chance to look at that workspace very long, but uh, we'll we'll send that out. Uh, it'll be available for download, uh, and uh, yeah, the basic idea there it, it's very powerful because. This was for WFS, but I could set up an SOS or WPS. And we just had a, uh, a thing in from Dale. Dale says he learned something today. He thought that SOS was merely an ABBA song. Oh. oh. You know, there you go. So I never, I never thought about that. but uh, <laughs> you know. And we really want to promote to tell um, that there's going to be a great webinar on September 18th. We sort of teased you a little bit, and that was intentional on what we can do with Excel. And um, so come to that one, September 18. That's going to be a rocking good time. Um, we're all going to tune into it here. And um, it should say workflows with FME, not with FM. I'm not sure. FM unless is a radio. Listen, unless you're listening, unless you're to, listening SOS. to That's right. That's yeah. right. Maybe you're listening to SOS on FM. Yeah. So, um, and all the recorded ones are here. So thank you so much. Um, training. There's lots of online training courses. They're all free. So we don't charge for training. So it doesn't matter where you are. That's a beautiful thing of the Internet. Um, connect up and um, we're having an FME and KML advanced one. If you look at the training thing um, and you see one, you don't find what you want, let us know what you would like a course on and we can put that together. All of the tutorials and recorded courses of course are online there at safe.com slash training. And again, here's all the communities that uh, that are out there. Um, FMEpedia, of course, is a great place to start. Yeah, the community is really sort of very user oriented. Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. You have and it's going to go for forums. a refresh now. So you know, oh, yeah. it's going to be taken up another level. So we're excited about and that. that. And the all new blog, Chris Majuri is working really hard on getting some. And really of course, don't forget work. about don't forget about support. So yep, uh, absolutely. Safe.com/support. Fill out a form if you've got uh, any any questions about how to do any of this stuff. Uh, if you download one of our examples and then you want to customize it yep. for your own application, yep. you know, just give us a shout. That's right. That's right. And if there's anything you wanted um, us to go in deeper on another webinar with around web services, let us know. We'd be happy to uh, spend more time. This again was um, just really getting a, getting the, our feet wet, getting um, you know. At the very yeah, just to give you idea. some idea about. Uh, okay, and what's questions possible. and answers. Let's pick a question or two. Okay. So, so what? Um, you see, I don't have, I do have internet, so I will, okay. Oh, so there are some people interested in OData, but oh, okay. they don't necessarily use it oh, yet. Okay. So yeah, yeah. some so of this stuff is sort of emerging. You know, yeah, things yeah, like WebSockets yeah. are pretty new. So. Yeah, so we can definitely provide you links there. The odata.org site is a great place to start there. Somebody's okay. asking about Fortran. Okay, well... A web service is simply a Fortran subroutine in the cloud. Well, it, the nice thing about web services is that you, you do not know what language it was implemented in. So yeah. there's no reason why it couldn't be a Fortran program in the cloud. It could be COBOL, could be anything. Yeah. You know, it could be Python, could be Java, could be C++. And it could it just could be, be another web service. Could Unless, just be a static file, like, so, like the yeah. OG WFS described feature type. Or get capabilities that could just be a URL to a static file. Yeah, you know, there's no reason to bother uh, a web service or something grinding just to and get that's back to that. That's essentially what a cache is. It's that's just right. A bunch of static files. That's right. So. so that's a good question. So okay. yeah, nothing else really. 
yeah, uh, yeah. jumps out. Okay. But uh, so yeah. So anyway, so thank you very much. Um, there's also the Twitter um, at FME Lizard, um, and he comments on things of re relating to FME and Safe software. Um, sometimes there's stuff he sees internally, sometimes externally. Um, we're not really sure who uh, the lizard is. One time we caught him and cut his tail off, but it you know what happens with lizards? Just back, it just grew yeah. back. So, yeah. uh, so we're so there's a we have people out trying to figure out who at FME Lizard is. But anyway, I'm sure uh, it's still uh, a mystery. That's right. We're that's trying right. to make web services no longer a mystery, but uh, yeah. that yeah. lizard's still. A mystery. And here's how to contact us: sales, of course, if you just want to get it for you know a. A demo, you know, or or you want an evaluation license? We give those away like candy too, like free yeah. candy, and um, support being mentioned. There's a number you can dial if you prefer that approach, and uh, our email addresses. This webinar is recorded, so if there's something you want to see, um, again, uh, it's there. And do, again, don't hesitate to contact us. So, so with that, I want to say thank you very much, Dean. It's always fun. Yeah, thanks, Don. Yeah, was... yeah, yeah, and thanks to uh, Laura, who is um, having to listen to. Uh, to my voice, and I've been told <laughs> I sound like Kermit the Frog. So there you go. So <laughs> not uh, a lizard, but a frog. Not a lizard, but oh, lizards eat frogs. So I got to be uh -oh. very careful. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So anyway, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, I apologize. Thanks. We've gone over by about three, four minutes, and um, about uh, six minutes. So uh, anyway, but thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for dialing in.